you will solve simple free fall problems using the special equations for constant acceleration. I am asking a few of you to stop using the grade 11 formulas and start using the new ones, including horizontal and vertical components of motion of the curved path of projectile without air resistance. You will draw free body diagrams for a projectile at various points along its path with and without air resistance, and you will calculate the horizontal and vertical components with respect to velocity and position of projectile at various points along its path, and solve problems for projectiles launched horizontally and at various angles to the horizontal to calculate maximum height, range, overall time and flight of the projectile. That's what the curriculum says. It boils down to this. Seven types of problems. I'm telling you what they are right up front. There are seven types of problems. They are horizontal ground, straight up. Basically, you've done those in grade 11 in the gravitational fields unit. Straight up, straight down. There is horizontal ground at an angle, which is two-dimensional. The I threw a guy out at second base type of problem. I gave you that for a reason, Ben. And I'm drawing these on here for a reason. There is off a cliff dropped. Which is basically a grade 11 kind of question. Straight down, no initial velocity, just a gravitational field kind of thing. There is dropped off a cliff, thrown down. And I draw that like this, right? So in other words, projected straight down. One dimensional. Basically, everything that's one dimensional, theoretically, you should be able to handle based on grade 11. I'll review them. There is off a cliff thrown up and then down. Which is up and down. Still one dimensional. Then there is off a cliff pro uh, projected horizontally. Which means like this. Think of the movies driving a car off cliff. You know, Tom and Louise. You're into the whole movie. And then there's the big daddy of them all, off a cliff, projected at an angle. There will be at least one of each on the test. Which one of all those do you think is the hardest, most involved? Number seven. That's why I call it the big daddy. There will be one of those. Probably one of these, one of those, maybe some of them, there might be two. They're all basically the same idea, which is what I'm going to introduce you to today. Okay? They are, it's really the same thing, just sort of bits and pieces of various different sort of parts. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to projectile motion today. Starting Monday, I'll be basically how it works is this. I do this, the introductory stuff today, the theory, and then three days of sample questions, about two labs, time for a test. Pardon me? This is the theory part today. Okay, that's it. One day of theory. There's really not a lot to it. I have to kind of drag it up to make it worthwhile. Okay, so after this, you're going to draw horizontal and vertical velocity vectors for a projectile at various points along the path, just like it said in the outline, and calculate horizontal and vertical components, which you already know how to do. So earlier we discussed vector quantities of velocity and acceleration. Since only horizontal and vertical motion was considered, we did not need to know about vector addition or the techniques of vector resolution. But for objects projected at angles other than straight up or straight down, we do. So we are now moving into two-dimensional motion. Just like the gentleman landing in the water. A projectile is any object that is projected by some means and continues in motion by its own inertia. No longer a force. Just flies through the air with the greatest of ease. A cannonball shot from a cannon, a stone thrown into the air, a ball that rolls off the edge of a table are all projectiles. These projectiles follow curved paths that at first thought seem rather complicated. However, these paths are surprisingly simple, and that is true, Surprisingly simple when we look at horizontal and vertical components of motion separately. FAX, FAY. 
actually, I guess it would be Vx and Vy, just velocity, no forces. The horizontal mo component of motion per projectile is no more complex than the horizontal motion of a bowling ball rolling freely along the level bowling alley. In other words, moving at a constant speed. Carter, we haven't even started the unit yet, barely, and you're on your phone already. If the retarding effect of friction can be ignored, the bowling ball moves at constant velocity. It covers equal distances and equal intervals of time. Just like in grade 11, I just did it this morning. Remember the ticker tape stuff? I don't know if you guys, some of you maybe missed it when I was away. The ticker tape stuff where the ball, the, the little dots are equally spaced, right? Why is it moving at a constant velocity? Or how can you tell it's moving at a constant velocity? The dots are equally spaced. That's a time lapse kind of thing. It covers equal distances and equal intervals of time. It rolls of its own inertia with no component of force acting in its direction of motion. Once you let the bowling ball go, it just keeps on going, right? Newton's law. It rolls without accelerating. The horizontal part of a projectile's motion is just like the bowling ball's motion along the out. And I'm allowing me to grab the tennis ball. Uh, oh, sorry, Dad. I'll get you one. Oh, you got good hands? As it rolls, uh, flies through the air, did it accelerate? Yes, John? How did it accelerate? Downwards, correct. But as it flies through the air, if there's no air resistance, it moves at a constant speed. Horizontally, the acceleration is a big fat? Zero. But Dan is right, there is acceleration and it is? Down, because when I throw it, you can see it because the ball does what? Curves. Curves down, right? You can't really see it, but it's actually moving at a constant speed horizontally. The only change is vertically. You have to be able to separate those two things. Interestingly enough, the horizontal component of motion projectile is completely independent of the vertical component of motion. How fast it goes sideways has nothing to do with what's happening up and down. But you do get that resultant, that resultant velocity. Each acts independently of the other. Their combined effects produce the variety of curved paths the projectile will follow. The multiple flash exposure of figure two the, on the page there, I think you guys have the picture, right? My picture's a little cleaner than yours because yours is photocopy, right? I think I actually have a different one than yours shows equally timed successive positions for a ball rolled off a horizontal table. Investigate the photo carefully, for there's a lot of good physics there. The curved path of the ball, mine is yellow, is best analyzed by considering the horizontal and vertical components of motion separately. There are two important things to notice. The first is that the ball's horizontal component of motion doesn't change as the falling ball moves sideways. If I were to take a red line and do this, What is the distance between those red lines? Same, increasing, or decreasing? The same. I drew them pretty quick. But more or less, they are the same. Is it speeding up sideways? It is not. It is moving sideways at a constant speed. The horizontal component remains constant. The ball travels the same horizontal distance in the equal times between each flash. That's because there is no component of gravitational force acting horizontally. Which way does gravity act? Only down. No force sideways other than air resistance. Gravity acts only downward. So the acceleration of the ball is downward. The second thing to note from the photo is that the vertical positions become further apart with time. <clears throat> the distances traveled vertically are the same as if the ball were simply dropped. So in other words, if I take these red lines and I do this, and I'm starting at the bottom for no real reason, you should see that these lines are actually getting, as you go down, they're getting farther and farther apart. How come? Speeding up. How come? Gravity acts down. But did you note that the downward motion of the ball is the same as that of free fall? The red one is just dropped. And you will see here by the white lines, the balls are perfectly in the same locations. It doesn't matter how fast it's going sideways, it still falls down at the same rate. 
Does that make sense? It doesn't matter how, it's sort of counterintuitive, right? Most people don't think of it. Let's get a clicker. Where are the clickers? Are they sitting out? Do you see them? Here they are. There's a few clicker questions here. Come get a clicker. Go for a little walk. Wake up. <laughs> The question is, at the instant, a horizontally held rifle, so someone's standing there holding a rifle, is fired over a level range, so flat surface, a bullet held at the side of the rifle is released and drops to the ground. So rifle, bullet in the other hand, right? Gun is fired at the same time that the bullet is dropped. Which bullet? The one fired down range, the one that's fired <laughs> out from the rifle, or the one drop from rest, the one that's just here, strikes the ground first? Go ahead and answer. A, B, C, or D. Which bullet, the one that is fired from the gun, or the one that is dropped, hits the ground first? Fired from a rifle. Joel, the Jeopardy song is now ending. Did I answer this question already for you? Please tell me you got it all right. They land at the same time. That was the point of this thing. The only difference is what? The rifle is accelerating it faster. Okay, They land at the same time. Horizontal and vertical are independent. Oh, if only there was a video I could show you that would show that. If only. Okay, now, what about things that are moving upwardly? Consider a cannonball shot at an upward angle. I think you have this page, right? Pretend for a moment that there is no gravity, and then according to the law of inertia, the cannonball will follow the straight line path shown by the dashed line. So if there was no gravity, this thing would just move at a constant slope, straight up like that, right? But there is gravity, so this doesn't happen. What really happens is the cannonball continually falls beneath this imaginary line until it finally strikes the ground. Get this, the vertical distance it falls beneath any point on the dashed line is the same distance it would fall if it were dropped from rest and it had been falling for the same amount of time. This distance is given by d equals one-half gt squared, which comes from the formula d equals vit plus one-half at squared, where the a is simply gravity and the initial velocity is zero. In other words, if you drop an object from 45 meters high, after three seconds it will be there, right? If you fire this after three seconds, it will be there. It's the exact same spot it would be if it fell from there. We can put this another way. Shoot a projectile skyward at some angle and pretend there's no gravity. After so many seconds t, it should be at a certain point along a straight line path. Because of gravity, it isn't. Where is it? The answer is it's directly below this point. How far below? 5 t squared meters, or 1 half of 9.8 or 4.9 t squared. Note another thing from figure 3, that's this one here, the cannonball moves equal horizontal distances. This distance is the same as that distance, is the same as that distance. Every second, it's continuing to move at the same speed horizontally. I don't know how many times I can say it. The horizontal and the vertical are independent. Uh, no acceleration takes place horizontally. The only acceleration is vertically in the direction of Earth's gravity. The vertical distance that falls below the imaginary straight line path during equal time intervals continually increases the time. All right, good. Figure 4 shows vectors representing both horizontal and vertical components of velocity for a projectile falling a parabolic path. This was one of the outcomes. Notice that the horizontal component is everywhere the same and only the vertical component changes. I'm going to do it in different colors. In blue, horizontal. These are all the same length. How come they're all the same? 
because the horizontal speed remains constant, the same. What the vertical doing? Obviously changing. There's none at the peak. And it's not only that, increasing or decreasing in size, but it's up at the start and down at the bottom, right? What's causing that? What's causing the change in the red vector? Gravity. Notice that the horizontal component is everywhere the same, only the vertical component changes. Note also that the actual velocity is represented by the vector that forms the diagonal of the rectangle formed by the vector components. In other words, the resultant. Why is the resultant exactly the same as the horizontal at the peak? Because there's no vertical to add to it, right? That's the result in there. If I take the blue one, put it there, see, tip to tail, all this good stuff, right? Like so. Uh, figure five shows the path traced by a projectile with the same launch speed at a steeper angle. Notice that the initial velocity vector has a greater vertical component than when the projection angle is less. The greater component results in a higher path, but the horizontal component is less, so the range is less. So this one here, same launch speed, same muzzle velocity, Right? Because it's a greater angle, it's going to go up. Why does it not go so far? Because the horizontal component is less. So it's not traveling as fast. I should have made it blue. It's not traveling as fast sideways. Right? So it doesn't go as far. Figure 6 shows the path of several projectiles, all having the same initial speed but different projection angles. The figure neglects the effects of air resistance, which we will pretty much do all the time. So the paths are all, our old friend from math, didn't mean for that to happen, parabolas. Notice that these projectiles reach different altitudes or heights above the ground. They also have different horizontal ranges or distances traveled horizontally. Right? So 75 goes there, whereas 30 goes much farther. The remarkable thing to know from figure 6 is that the same range is obtained from two different projection angles. Angles that add up to 90 degrees. You'll notice here that 30 is exactly the same launch target as 60. When they add up to 90, they will land in the same place. An object thrown into the air at an angle of 60 degrees, for example, will have the same range as if it was thrown at the same speed at an angle of 30 degrees. For the smaller angle, of course, the object remains in the air for a shorter time. So because this 30 here is not as high, doesn't go as high, but the horizontal velocity is much more than this one, so it lands in the same place. Maximum range is attained when the ball is batted at an angle of nearly 45 degrees. Just makes sense. However, due to air resistance, in cases where the weight of the projectile is comparable to the applied force, it's like a heavy javelin, so something heavy, the applied force does not produce the same speed for different projection angles, and maximum range occurs for angles quite a bit less than 45. If you are a golfer, you will know that most golf balls go up like this and then eventually do what? Sort of come down flat. That's what you try to do when you're close to the green, right? So I've heard, Carter, yes. Sometimes to the right or to the left. Yeah. So here's the questions. So, a projectile is shot into air at an angle into the air. If air resistance is negligible, what is the downward acceleration? I'm looking for a number. I'm looking for the number. A projectile is shot at an angle into the air. If air resistance is negligible, what does the word negligible mean? So, so small that we don't worry about it. Kind of like my hairstyle. What is the downward acceleration? Correct answer? Minus 9.8. Gravity. Minus 9.8. I'm hoping that the people that got it wrong put just 9.8. Let's try again. What is its horizontal acceleration? Again. Looking for a number. It says that a projectile is shot at an angle into the air. If air resistance is negligible, what is its downward acceleration? That's the one we answered before. And now the question is, what is its horizontal acceleration? 
And yes, I have given you the information to answer this correctly. There's no doubt about it. Come on, you guys. What's the answer? Yay! The answer is a big fat zero. Why? It doesn't change its speed horizontally. Well done. Okay. At what part of the path does the projectile have its minimum speed? When is it going the slowest? At the start? The end? The peak? Or is it the same throughout? Overall minimum speed. Actually, it should probably say... Uh, no, maybe that's why I'd say yeah. So I'm not worried about positive or negative. That's right. I'm just worried about actual speed. No, it means at lunch, not 10 minutes before lunch. At lunch. When is it moving at the smallest speed? Start and peak, same throughout. Control, the Jeopardy song is ending. Correct answer is C, at the peak. A little harder. Why at the peak? Exactly. The horizontal component, let's say the horizontal component is 2 meters per second, right? At every other point, there's a vertical that's increasing that. The overall speed here might be 3. Here it might be 2.5. Here it's only 2. There is no vertical to add it to. If air resistance is small enough to be negligible, a projectile will rise to its maximum height in the same time it takes to fall from the height to the ground. In other words, the time up is equal to the time down. This is because it's deceleration by gravity while going up is the same as its acceleration by gravity while going down. The speed it loses going up is therefore the same as the speed it gains while coming down. So the projectile arrives at the ground, the same speed it had when it was projected from the ground. You always see those guys in some far off country, some rebel running on a horse, got a gun, he's shooting it in the air. How fast is that bullet coming down? Same speed as it left the gun. Without air, without wind, it's coming down right at him. Same speed. He might as well put the gun right to his chin. Not, if you're going riding on a horse, don't stand in one place and shoot guns in the air. Don't shoot guns in the air. If a projectile is projected fast enough so that its curvature matches the curves of the Earth and it's above the atmosphere so that air resistance does not affect its motion, it will fall all the way around the Earth and become an Earth satellite. And we will deal with this when we deal with uniform circular motion. What I'm saying there is this. If this is the Earth and you can project it fast enough that it falls and matches the curvature of the Earth, it will simply continue falling forever. And I'll deal with that in that unit. I showed you the big slide, right? Shelby said it's fake. 